Comic style coloring is not that hard. The first big secret is that the most important color is actually black. I know, technically black is not a color, but it does play a huge role in comic art. Black adds a lot of contrast. It's basically the darkest value a shadow can have and it adds a lot of atmosphere. So before you start the actual coloring, start by putting down black shadows on top of your line work. Usually these are a combination of form shadows, which are shadows on objects, and cast shadows, which are shadows an object throws onto the ground or into another object. I'll put some shading videos in the video description where I show you exactly how to do this. To add more detail and round out the forms, comic artists usually use cross hatching at the edge of form shadows. This basically means to draw lines in one direction and then cross them by drawing lines in the opposite direction. When this is done, the next step is putting down the base colors. These are the local colors, meaning the actual colors of the objects. In this case, the red eyes and the blue face paint, for example. This step is called flatting, because you just put on the flat colors and there's no shading yet. You can actually do this pretty fast if you put the blacks and the colors on a separate layer. You can either just put the blacks on top, which allows you to just draw the colors below them, or you can put the color layer on top of the blacks. Just make sure to put the top layer to the blending mode multiply in this case. This way you can easily paint in the colors while the blacks stay perfectly intact. Now, you could actually leave it like this, and a lot of comics actually look like this, especially older ones. It's a simple but valid style. But we are going to take this further and add midtones. These are the tones that give more definition to the light area. Now, we are not only using flat colors anymore, but starting to use more shading. The goal here is to make it look more three dimensional. In this case, I chose a literal mid tone. A tone that's darker than the light, but not quite as dark as the shadows. So it's basically in the middle between light and shadow. And I painted these mostly around the shadow edges, where midtones are usually darkest. I used a flat brush that was set up to be more transparent the less pen pressure I used. This allows you to paint smooth transitions easily by painting over an area several times with light pen pressure. To learn how midtones really work, check out my detailed video that I'll also put in the description box. Another very important piece of the puzzle are the highlights. These makes the shading even more interesting and can really make your comic art stand out. Highlights always tend to appear in certain areas, like the tip and the edge of the nose, or between the forehead and the side of the head, for example. In short, highlights often appear where there's a plane change. Highlights also show up when something looks wet, like the teeth and gums here. When something is wet, highlights tend to have sharp edges, while the other highlights on the face are smoother in this case. Again, I used a brush with the opacity set to pen pressure and painted with white. This way the white automatically mixes with the color below and I could easily paint soft transitions. Let me know in the comments if I should make a specific video on highlights in the future. And hold on, we are not done yet. After the highlights you can go on and add some cool effects. What comic artists like to do is to add a glow effect to the light areas. In this case I used a soft brush and lightly painted over the lit areas on a new layer. When painting I used the corresponding light color. In this case green for the side light, a very bright blue for the top light and red for the eyes. I painted on a new layer that I set to the blending mode linear dodge, which brightens everything up a bit and adds more punch to the color. If you paint over the edge of the light here, the color bleeds into the black that you painted before. This maximizes the effect and really makes it seem like the light would glow. And these effects can really take your comic art to the next level, but you gotta be careful. It can easily be overdone. In this case I did it for the two main light sources, the bright light from the top and the green light from the right. And I did it for the eyes, which really glow here as well. The thing is, there's actually much more that goes into a comic art piece like this. You need to do thumbnails and quick sketches and a whole lot of planning. So if you did like this, I'd really enjoy you checking out the video on screen right now, where I go into more detail and show you the whole process of painting a comic cover from scratch. Thanks for watching.